Hello everyone, in the words of Monty Python, and now for something completely different. A friend of mine commented on a post yesterday or the day before, a very good friend of mine, and he said something quite profound. He said, you can't feel science. And I thought, that's a very, very good point. And it made me reflect, and I thought, well, can you? And then I thought, started thinking about the different types of brains that we have. I started thinking about the intellect, the heart brain, the gut brain, and a lot of the work I've been doing around tuning into these three brains. Before I go into the example, oh, let me just give you the example of what it was, because this is quite a big point and it's quite a major claim. I, uh, I've read a book recently in the last year uh, by, by a, an author called Arthur Furstenberg, and it's called The Invisible Rainbow. And in this book, the author, which is brilliant, reviewed by doctors, PhDs, scientists, engineers, everything, everything. <laughs> it's reviewed by some very reputable people. And uh, it's got 14,000 reviews or something as well. In that book, he claims that preceding every pandemic going back 220 years was an increase in electromagnetic radiation. Massive claim, but if you check out the book, it's awesome. And I said, I have a feeling that the reason that people are suffering right now, a lot of people are suffering, is because there's been a huge increase in electromagnetic radiation. And it goes from 4G to 5G. I don't wanna talk about that just yet, because that's not the point of this video. But my friend said, you can't feel science. And I thought, very interesting. Can, you can't feel science, but can you feel if it's science or if it's science? Because we can kind of, if we, if we want to prove an argument, we can find science proving it and we can find science proving against it. <laughs> and, and in the end, it comes down to our own innate intelligence. So I'm gonna give three examples in my life about where I felt things very strongly. Before I do that, I'm gonna give you a snippet of the, Ma the, the Matrix movie, which I, re I watched again a few years ago, and there was a scene that really jumped out at me when Morpheus is talking to Neo. And Morpheus says to Neo, let me tell you why you're here, Neo. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you can feel it. Like there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. It's like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. I watched this a few years ago again, and I just, I literally, literally, I pretty much did jump out of my seat. And I thought, that's me, Neo. Anyway, <laughs> it really helped me kind of tune into the idea of feeling versus the programmed intellect. And a lot of the work I've been doing over the last couple of years is tuning into the heart brain. And the Heart Brain Institute, or the Heart Math Institute, by the way, has been studying the science of the, the union, the connection between our heart brains, our head brains, and our gut brains. Have you ever uh, asked a question or come across some information and your gut literally just churns? It's like, Doo -doo. it's, I get that quite a bit. Quite a bit. And um, I'll never forget one moment, one instance around four years ago, I hired someone. And I asked one question before I hired her, and she swerved it, and my gut literally went Voodoo! And I was like, whoa. <laughs> that was my body talking to me. We have three brains, three main brains. We have the programmed intellect, and we have the heart brain, and then we have the gut brain. What they've shown at the Heart Math Institute is that there's communication going between these brains all the time. And they know that most communication goes from the heart brain to the head brain. By the way, 30... 40,000 sensory neurites in the brain, in the heart brain. They've proven this scientifically, actual science. They've proven it, that the brain, the heart has a little brain. It's referred to as the little brain in the heart. You can go to heartmath.com, by the way, look at the science of this, it's, it's amazing. They've been studying, studying this for about 30 years. And they also know that the most communication goes that way, not that way, that way, and up to 90%. And it also goes to the gut. We have neurotransmitters in our gut, which is why we do have that intelligence in our, in our heart, in our gut, and in our brain. So I've, the more and more we do this kind of uh, work, if you like, and meditation and tune into the heart, which I've been doing for a very long time now. In fact, I've been guiding a group for the last six months and we've been doing it after breath work. We start to tune into this intelligence that is way beyond the intellect. And it's something that I've, I feel is way more supreme than any information that we read or what we watch 
whether it's on TV or information we're being told. Ultimately, it's, it's from this intelligence within the body. So an example from my life, when I was 15 years old, some of you know my story, I had really bad eczema for 30 years. Although, well, obviously when I was 15, that was halfway through that. So um, I remember being told, um, whenever I went to go to the doctor, they'd give me steroid creams, antibiotics, and prescription moisturizers. Same combination every time. Not antibiotics every time, when it got really bad, when it got infected, antibiotics. And there was one particular time when I had a horrible flare up and he examined me, the doctor examined me, went back to his seat and I remember him just looking over at me and just saying, hey, um, Neil, you're you allergic to penicillin. And I went, um, I don't think so. It's an antibiotic and he goes, just like on his computer, tapping away. And then he turned to me and said, do you want some more Betanovate? That's the steroid cream that's left pigmentation all over my skin. I've like, literally lost skin pigmentation. Uh, do you want some more Benavane? I says, sure. Uh, more Diprobase, a horrible prescription moisturizer, which has nasty ingredients in it. And uh, I was like, yeah, I guess, why not? Thanks. And I just remember looking at, he was looking at his computer screen, then back at me, computer screen, back at me. A feeling I had in my body was something was amiss about this treatment that I was receiving. I was 15, around that time. It was a feeling, it, I can't, exp it wasn't here, it was here. It was like something, my body talking to me. <laughs> and then fast forward t 20 odd years or so, I actually found out about the history of the medical industry and why I had these feelings about why doctors aren't trained in nutrition or to heal and why they receive training about drugs. But that, that's more the intellect, but it kind of 20 years later I found out about it and I've talked about it and how the, um, the medical industry is created. And then another one, was when my father had a stroke and I had this feeling in my heart or in my body that his stroke was avoidable. It wasn't the intellect, it was here, it was in my body. And I just went on a bit of a mission to prove or find out why he had this um, stroke because I thought that he, he had chronic inflammation, why didn't he just reverse this thing? Because I was, I was quite new into health and wellness and I kept on seeing this word inflammation everywhere which is basically a symptom of your your body being toxic, it's your immune system protecting you from foreign or alien intruders, whether it's a solid threat or, or a perceived threat. But I'm not, I don't want to talk about too much because that's the intellect. But it's the idea that he had this thing that he, I knew in my heart was reversible, but it led to a stroke. And then all he was given was drugs. So I, was, I had this feeling in my heart that, that was avoidable. And that's what I found to be true. And then I wrote my book, The Vitality Secret, in 2016, revealing all of this stuff. Because I thought, we need to be screaming this from the rooftops. Um, the body can heal anything. The, the, I used to say just chronic stuff, but now I believe the body can heal literally anything um, because I've seen it done in just in so many cases of even really irreversible stuff. So uh, chronic inflammation is like the underlying cause of all these different symptoms. When we get to the cause, we can clean the body out of all of these symptoms. So that was a feeling that led me on that path to find out that the body can heal anything, we can heal our own bodies, our bodies are designed to heal themselves, we are more resilient than we've ever been allowed to believe, we are phenomenally powerful human beings. Oh, by the way, someone else also said to me um, recently after a breathwork session, he said, vanity is the gateway to consciousness. And I thought, that's profound and I love it. The moment we start focusing on the body and start nourishing it and fueling it and removing all these toxins, we start getting rid of all of these symptoms, we reverse illness, we heal ourselves, and then we like, we ex we like elevate our consciousness, our awareness, and we find out all of these incredible things about the human body. So um, that was another example, that's quite a big example of something that happened in my life. Um, but yeah, there was, there was a feeling, um, I've kind of covered three and two then, but feeling that something was amiss with the industry, and that's what I found out. Then found out to be true through the intellect by reading stuff. But I do believe that we have this ability to see through bullshit, basically, by tuning into the heart's intelligence, through the gut intelligence. And there's something, well, at the HeartMath Institute, you can literally train to do this. You can train to, they give the example, in fact, Greg Braden gave this example many, many years ago. When someone's sick and you've got all of your friends and family and relatives, everyone giving you all this information, going, my, my, my way's gonna help, my way's gonna help. And the person who's sick's going, I've got all of this information, how the, 
who the fuck do I listen to? The way that we can get to the truth is by tuning into the heart, finding out from the body, asking the body questions. And we can literally train ourselves to do this. And uh, there's some really great um, stuff on, called, on Gaia, like Missing Links. There's some brilliant uh, documentaries on this. And um, there's also the HeartMath Institute where you can literally learn how to do this. So when it comes to world events right now, I'm not gonna give anything specific, but you can probably see through what I'm saying. If some, something is presented to me in the, in the mainstream media, my body tells me very quickly whether it's true or not. If we are told to do things, my body tells me very quickly whether that's true or not, whether it's gonna cause harm or, it, or if it is not. You might realize that a lot of people in the holistic space have a very uh, one, different way of looking at things compared to, I guess, the majority of the population. A lot of people have gone through their own healing journey, reverse an illness, and they've, I've, I just talk about the wake up call, about the, how the wake up call literally, it, it like jolts you so hard out of like a, a paradigm of doing things. It's like you start questioning everything. And I mean everything. <laughs> All of the systems in place in our society, you start questioning, you ask, ask questions, like bigger, bigger questions. If this person, why, how are all these people reversing cancer without a single medical intervention? How is that happening? Advanced, metastasized stage four cancer without any medical intervention. Radical remission, brilliant book. 250 people radically reverse stage four cancer without a single bit of medical intervention. People are doing this all over the world. How are they doing it? And it's, you start to kind of open up your mind to all this stuff. So um, yeah, we, I just want to leave with this. I hadn't, I didn't know where this was going to lead. I just wanted to be guided by how I was going to talk. <laughs> I just want to su suggest that we are way more in, we have more power than we've ever been allowed to believe. We can, we can access intelligence. We've, we've been, almost been programmed out of using. Like if you think, look at the whole education system, how, we, how we're taught to learn and repeat, learn, repeat, learn, repeat, learn, repeat get a degree, get, get, get exams, get a degree, get another degree, and we've got academic inflation where a degree was worth one thing 10 years ago, now you need a master's, now you need an MBA, now you need, now you need all these qualifications. We're, we're like programmed into our intellect, so we're just information, <laughs> forgetting that we have this intelligence here that is unfiltered. That's what I didn't say earlier, it's unfiltered. This is unfiltered, and it's directly from the consciousness, from this field of intelligence which we are all connected to. We don't need to read anything. We, for, we read too much. <laughs> we get exposed to too much. And uh, we have this incredible power to not only heal ourselves through thought, through feeling, through emotion, through connecting with this field. This, you know, I'm talking Joe Dispenza work here. The, we can become supernatural. And it sounds insane, but people are doing this all over the world, reversing all of these different illnesses without a single bit of medical intervention. We are so powerful. And um, I guess I'll leave with that. Check out the HeartMath Institute for accessing, there's, there's a free course, you can access it. How to train yourself to tune into your intuition on demand, how you can see through the BS, how you can see truth, how you can see BS, it's amazing. And then kind of like, we don't need to listen, listen to anyone or watch any news or any government, all that nonsense. <laughs> Some of it's okay, but yeah. So I'll leave with that, heartmath.com forward slash science. Check it out, it's amazing. And uh, thank you for the inspiration, my friend who wrote that message. <laughs>